Hi and welcome to Dark Rain True Crime Channel, my name is Rachel, and today I'm telling the story of 14-year-old Cinnamon Brown, and the family betrayal that surrounds the case. In the early hours of the morning, on the 19th of March 1985, police were called to a house in Garden Grove, California. They were met by a man with tears rolling down his cheeks, shouting, I think she's been shot, but I'm too scared to look. He then asked officers if they would go in and check out the situation. The man was David Brown, he informed officers that he and his wife Linda, had an argument over their daughter Cinnamon earlier that evening, so he went for a drive to cool off. When he arrived back from his drive, he found his wife's sister, Patricia Bailey, who was known as Patty, standing at the door in hysterics, saying his daughter Cinnamon had tried to kill Linda while he was out. Patty was sobbing as the police entered the house, saying, how could she have done this? Officers moved towards the bedroom and looked in. A woman was laid flat on her back, she had a huge bloodstain across her chest, one arm was dangling over the side of the bed and blood was oozing from her mouth. The police officer listened to see if he could hear her breathing, nothing, so he checked her neck for a pulse, again nothing. The woman, 23-year-old Linda Brown was dead. David and Linda Brown, lived at the property with their seven-month-old baby daughter Crystal, also living at the house was David's 14-year-old daughter Cinnamon, and Linda's younger sister Patty, who was 17. Patty told officers that after David went for a drive to cool off, Cinnamon and Linda continued the argument, resulting in Cinnamon storming off to her bedroom and slamming the door. Later that evening, Patty heard gunshots coming from inside the house, and in the darkness, she seen someone who looked like Cinnamon running out of the back door. Police conducted a search of the house, and Cinnamon was nowhere to be seen. As daylight broke around 7am, more officers arrived at the property, and the whole area was searched once again. As he was searching the back garden, one officer passed a large dog kennel, and a small puppy came running out, as he bent down to pick up the animal, he looked inside the kennel and saw a young teenage girl, curled up into a ball. He reached into the kennel, and noticed she was semi-conscious with her head in a pool of vomit. Mixed in with the vomit was a large amount of prescription drugs. She slowly regained consciousness, and with the help of the officer, she climbed out of the kennel. The girl was Cinnamon Brown. She had taken a massive overdose of painkillers, but could still remember the events of the early morning, and told officers that her stepmother had flipped out and threatened to kill her. She said she would kill me if I didn't get out of the house Cinnamon explained, she hated me, and after she fell asleep I got the gun. I didn't know what I was doing, then I ran into Linda's room and shot her twice. Cinnamon then told the police officers, that she ran to the dog kennel, took a handful of painkillers and wrote a suicide note. In the dog kennel, officers found a handwritten note, it read, Dear God, please forgive me, I didn't mean to hurt her. Two hours later, unable to fight the drugs she had taken, Cinnamon lost consciousness. She was taken to hospital, and after a few days, she recovered from the near-fatal overdose. Several months passed and ultimately, Cinnamon would stand trial for the murder of her stepmother Linda Brown. District Attorney Mike McGuire, described the murder as cold-blooded, and stated that Cinnamon had carried out the murder because she was depressed and angry and Linda had threatened to throw her out of the house. Her father, David Brown would also give evidence, he told the court that Cinnamon had been moody and depressed in the weeks leading up to the murder, and she had even talked about suicide. During his testimony, he also told the court that he had shown Cinnamon how to fire a gun, just the day before the murder took place. Cinnamon would go on to be found guilty of first-degree murder, and when the guilty verdict was read out aloud, she just stood there emotionless, looking bewildered and said, I don't understand. The sentencing would follow, and the defense team argued that she was legally insane at the time of the murder. Her grandmother also told the court that Cinnamon had imaginary friends, and had been depressed over the divorce of her mother and father. Her mother Barbara even gave evidence, telling the court that about a week before the murder, Cinnamon had called her and told her that she was going crazy with all the arguments that were going on in the house. Cinnamon was sentenced to 27 years to life in prison for the murder of her stepmother Linda, although due to her age, she would be housed with the California Youth Authority. Cinnamon was alone in the youth institution. 
She waited patiently in prison for her father to visit her. But the months went by, and her father didn't visit once, or never even bothered to write her a letter. When she telephoned her father from the prison, Patty would answer, and say her father was too ill to speak to her. It was then that she realized, that she had been abandoned by him. The only people that came to see Cinnamon over the next two years, were her grandparents, and in August 1988, her grandfather told her that Patty and her father had been secretly married, and moved into a luxurious new home together, he also told her that Patty was now pregnant. After feeling alone and abandoned, Cinnamon decided that it was time that the truth finally came out. It all started in the summer of 1984, a few months after her half-sister Crystal was born. David was working up to 16 hours a day at his database recovery business. He charged companies huge sums of money to recover lost files when their computers crashed. He was very successful in his business and was a millionaire by the time he was 30 years old. At the same time, Cinnamon was doing very well at school, getting very good grades, and her striking beauty combined with her laid-back personality, made her a very popular girl. But it was around this time that her father stopped allowing her friends over to the house. He also started saying things like, we should only trust each other, and, you know how important family is don't you? She asked her stepmother Linda why things had changed, and why she wasn't allowed friends over, but Linda just shrugged and told her that her father made all the rules. But things weren't going well in David and Linda's relationship, they were growing apart. Linda was an exhausted new young mother, whereas her sister Patty, was a 17-year-old more fun version of Linda, who was getting more and more attention from David. When the three of them were out together, Cinnamon felt like an outsider, one time whilst on a shopping trip, she caught the pair of them whispering, the next time she turned around was the first time she caught them kissing. Dirty Dave and Patty had been having an affair all along. As they drove home from the shopping trip, Cinnamon was still in shock from seeing them kissing, when her father started talking about how Linda needed to be killed, as she was planning on killing him. Are you listening to me, her father said, Linda is going to have me killed, so she can take over the business. Patty heard her on the phone saying she wanted him taken out. If we don't do something, I will be leaving, there will be no more family. Shocked Cinnamon told him to knock it off, and asked him if he was joking. I swear I'm not he said. Will you please help me? I can't do it because I'd rather die than go to jail. And you're a minor, so you wouldn't even spend any time in prison. In the weeks that followed, Cinnamon tried to avoid being left alone with the pair as every time they were, they kept trying to persuade her that she must help them. David would keep saying to his young 14-year-old daughter, if you loved me you would help me, and finally, at the beginning of March, Cinnamon gave in to the pressure and agreed to help her father kill her stepmother. David and Patty devised a plan and wasted no time in training Cinnamon, before she might lose her nerve and change her mind. They made her write suicide notes, and gave her shooting lessons with the handgun that David owned. She was also under strict orders not to mention either David or Patty, and promised to stick to the story they had given her. David continued to promise his daughter, that she would spend no time in prison. On the 18th of March, hours after Cinnamon had fallen asleep in bed, David shook her awake. It has to be tonight he said. When Cinnamon asked why, his only response was, if you loved me you'll do it. Cinnamon followed her father downstairs, he handed her a glass of water, and gave her a handful of pills and ordered her to swallow them. David told her, that she must try to shoot herself in the head a little bit, to make it look like she tried to kill herself with the gun, but Cinnamon told him she couldn't as she was too scared. David left through the back door, and went out in his car to give himself an alibi. Patty came in with the gun and a pillow to muffle the sound. She gave the gun to Cinnamon. Go on you have to do it she instructed. Cinnamon went into Linda's room, she couldn't see much as the only light was coming from the alarm clock, but she could just make out Linda lying in her bed. She closed her eyes and pulled the trigger. The blast from the gun threw her backwards, and she let go of the gun, which ended up stuck inside the pillow. Cinnamon panicked and ran into Patty's room, where the two of them tried to get the gun out of the pillow, another shot rang out and they screamed in horror, thinking it may have hit the baby. The baby was unharmed, 
and Patty finally released the gun from the pillow. She heard moaning coming from Linda's bedroom, and ordered Cinnamon back into the room to shoot her again. Cinnamon stood outside Linda's door and blindly fired into the room, she then dropped the gun, she ran downstairs and picked up the suicide note from the kitchen table and ran into the dog kennel, where she would stay until the following morning. When Cinnamon told the prosecutor her story, she wasn't aware that he was already investigating David and Patty for being behind the murder. He was already aware that David had collected $843,000 in life insurance after Linda's death. Some of the policies were just taken out months before her murder. Later that same month, Cinnamon convinced her father to come and visit her in jail, and when he did, she was wearing a hidden microphone. Their conversations proved beyond any doubt that he coerced her into carrying out the murder of Linda. In September 1988, David and Patty were arrested for conspiracy to commit first degree murder. David was first to stand trial, as Patty was to be tried as a juvenile and it was also announced that Patty would testify against him. By the time of the trial, Patty had corroborated Cinnamon's version of events and explained how she loaded the gun and handed it to Cinnamon, telling her to shoot and kill her own sister. She testified that she and Cinnamon had carried out the murder under the orders of David, and just over a year after the killing of her sister, she had married David, her ex-brother-in-law. Before the trial however, it was uncovered that David had attempted to hire a hitman to kill Patty, the district attorney, and one of the investigating officers who helped build a case against him. David's brother, delivered a down payment of $22,700 to David's former cellmate Richard Steinhardt, but what David didn't know, was that Steinhardt was cooperating with police, and officers were listening to every phone conversation the two men had spoken about the hit list. During David's trial, he sat emotionless throughout the testimonies of Patty and Cinnamon, and it wasn't until the secret recordings of Cinnamon and his former cellmate Steinhardt were played that he looked defeated, shaking his head in disappointment at their betrayal of him. On June 15, 1989, David Brown was found guilty of conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, he was sentenced to life without parole. Patty Bailey, pleaded guilty in juvenile court to first-degree murder, and was sentenced to less than four years in a state youth facility. She was released on her 25th birthday in February 1993. Cinnamon was released a year earlier in February 1992 after spending seven years in jail. Upon her release she stated that she feels sorry for her father, but still loved him, although she would not forgive him and can live with the fact that she will never see him again. Cinnamon married soon after her release from prison and started a family she has stayed out of trouble since. David Brown would die in prison in 2014, aged 61 years old. What do you all think of this case? Myself, I don't think David had any intentions of Cinnamon staying alive, firstly giving her a handful of pills to take, then telling her to shoot herself in the head to make it look like a suicide. If she never vomited those pills back up, she would have probably died from an overdose, which is what the dirty old man wanted, then along with the suicide note his daughter would take all the blame. Then he could live happy with the life insurance money and his little harlot. And speaking of the little harlot, how Patty was sentenced to under four years for conspiring to murder her own flesh and blood is beyond me, the sister who let her live in her house when she had nowhere else to go. All for Dirty Dave, the millionaire. I hope it haunts her every day. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, please give the video a like, to help get the video seen, and I hope to see you all in the next one.